Although I am speaking English. But not with a British accent. And we won that war in 1776. We haven't looked back since. This is a big deal because when your daddy... No, he did not do that. Within the scope of empires, we were still much nicer than the Romans were. Burr, burr, burr. The Queen of England has just passed away, and there are a lot of different reactions. Some people are sad, some people are glad, and a lot of people don't really know how to feel. Here's what we think. The relationship that a lot of us have with the royal family is certainly a complicated one. We also share with so many of you in the United Kingdom. You know, the full spectrum of emotions. Everything from how will the kingdom carry on all the way to you shouldn't have colonized India, bye Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. Uh, this was not a news story that we were necessarily going to talk about originally, but however, a friend did kind of loop us into the conversation. Yeah, a major Asian YouTuber hit us up and they were frustrated at the lack of opinion that Asian Americans had on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II because they were saying that some people in the black Twitter world were saying, you know, she's not our queen. I don't buy into Anglo narratives. In fact, I stand against the British monarchy, the British empire and this history of colonialism, you know, racism, slavery, resource extraction. I'm against it. And he was saying, you know, if Asians, we don't come out against the queen too, then People are going to say we're white adjacent and that's what everybody's been accusing us of and I'm very frustrated. Well, it is kind of complicated and that is why we are going to break it down from a micro, mid to a macro perspective. Um, so if you guys are excited about this video at all or interested to hear what we say, please do us a favor right now and hit that like button and let's get into the micro. Woo! All right, guys, just leading off, I want to let people know, Andrew. Shockingly enough, Andrew, me and you are not British Empire historians. What? We can't list off the pros. We can't list off the cons. We can't list off the gray area because the truth is we're Americans. We don't really know. Yeah, but I do want to say that a lot of people forget how big of a deal this is that she passed because at one time, at one point in her life, Queen Elizabeth's face was on 33 different currencies around the world. Bro, she's on the Canadian dollar right now, don't you know? So whether or not you like her, or you like the British colonial empire, or you don't care, or you love her, or whatever, it, it is a big deal. But I just thought it was about Princess Diana getting chated on by Charles and Meghan Markle. That's all I really knew. And just what yeah, I Americans, about. we just love the drama. We just love the Kardashian drama. Long story short, guys, I broke it down from my five-point scale. Negative 2.5, zero being neutral or indifferent 50-50, and positive 2.5. At negative 2.5, we've got people who do not like the British monarchy and British empire. Let's say uh, a lot of Irish people, um, a lot of colonies in Africa, some colonies in the Caribbean, India, Bangladesh, these people would have a more negative perception of the British monarchy. Not saying that they're celebrating the Queen Elizabeth is dead, but I'm just saying they do not like what happened to their countries and how they were impacted and oppressed and had all these things happen to them. In the zero zone, I would put Americans in the sense that they just don't even got an opinion, man. We won that war in 1776. We haven't looked back since. I would also put in this area, potentially Hong Kong, Singapore, certain Asian colonies that are kind of like, they're kind of happy with the way things turned out. So they're kind of like, you know, uh, you know, they did some good things. They did some bad things, but you know, it's okay how it turned out. And then at positive 2.5, I would put British people uh, that are pro-royalist, possibly, you know, White British people being like, oh my God, she was like the greatest example of a great English person representing our culture to the entire world. I think I'll be calling out of work on Monday. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't realize that if you grew up in Britain, you got a lot more coverage of the queen and the royal family. Like, this is something you thought about. Like, I don't know if it was every day, but at least every week you got news about it. In America, we don't really hear about what happens unless it's like gigantic news because, you know, ultimately we're not part of the British Empire. But, you know, people who are, they heard a lot more about the queen. They got to know her personality. And some people even feel like she's like a, you know, second mom or like, you know, somebody part of their family. Family. Yeah, I feel like in America, we more replace royalty with like Hollywood figures, whether that was like Marilyn Monroe all the way to the Kardashians, you know, them being sort of the old school and new school version of each other. Um, I will say this, Andrew, for our world that we really care about, the death of Kobe Bryant rocked the sports world, rocked the basketball world, particularly in LA. You can find murals of Kobe Bryant everywhere. Going into the mid, Andrew, we were talking about Kobe Bryant, Andrew. 
People like Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Diana, Mother Teresa, Michael Jackson. These people are global A1 icons, particularly in the Western world, you know, the Anglosphere or English speaking countries. These are A1 global icons. Anytime one of these people passes, Andrew, it brings up a lot of other discussions that are not just directly related to that person's life. I think that person's life is remembered, respected, celebrated, dissected, pros and cons, but also it's just like such a monumental event that it almost like ties into other things too where people try to draw those connections to other things they want to talk about. Yeah, also we have to understand this was the only queen we had during the time of like media. You know, for the past 96 years, like she's during the time when the internet blew up and everybody's gonna, you know, have their opinions and voice their opinions. But I'm sure centuries before, man, even if one of the kings or queens died, like, you know, nobody like really knew them as people. In the mid to... I think we have to consider that not only did every commonwealth, every colony, every like nation state or whatever that got taken over or impacted by the British, not only do those countries and or have their own perspective, but different people within those countries have their own perspective. So say, for example, you're from a commonwealth with generally a negative perspective on the British Empire, but through some sort of colonial system or commonwealth system, you were able to immigrate to London and you became rich or at least upper middle class for you and your family and you were able to send money back home. You may have a more like pro-British image because of your own situation, right? No, I mean, I think people even from that situation can acknowledge that the British Empire and colonization did do some pretty bad things. Um, but they, for their personal, they might be like, oh, well, you know, I kind of made it up. So I made it out. So, you know, I, I guess I'm just like thankful for that opportunity that I got. Right. Me. We are talking about different individuals interfacing with a system and getting different outcomes, even within a country that in the macro sense may have been like against it. Moving into the macro big picture, Andrew. This is my favorite zone to think about, right? Because Andrew, I'm telling you, multiple YouTube videos got like 10,000 comments of people debating back and forth. My opinion, my thoughts, my stats. I hate the British. I love the British. And you know, some of the British are getting real defensive being like, you know, if you look at us within the scope of empires, we're still much nicer than the Romans were. You know, don't compare us to losers. The winners are, everybody always hates the winners. Only compare us to other winners. Man, it was a really, really interesting and entertaining comment section because, I mean, you're hearing, you're hearing all different perspectives and I think, like, a lot of people's feelings are legit, right? Obviously, if they feel like their personal family or their lineage was affected negatively, then, of course, there's nothing you can tell them. They're going to feel negatively about the British Empire. But, obviously, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. I guess it kind of brings up the question about, like, how are we going to view the British empire moving forward? Like how should you, or it's just, is it just gonna be a fact that everybody's gonna feel differently forever? Man, you know what the problem is? It's like not everybody wants to do the research. And then not only that, everybody's research is gonna be different. And then at the end of the day, like you said, everybody's family or individual situation was impacted differently. So then that's gonna to lead to a whole nother thing. But yeah, there's a reason why people are on negative 2.5, zero and positive 2.5. And I'm sure they can all try to give a good argument of why they're at where they're at on that scale. Andrew, I think it really goes to a larger discussion about power. You know what I mean? How are we gonna view power moving forward? How do we view power historically? You know, it's uh, really tough to say because like you said, the British were the most powerful single small country. You know, America is the most powerful now, but it's like viewed as very multicultural, you know, whether or not you believe it's true. But like the, the, the British empire was viewed as the last like true, like dominant, fully Anglo country. Even though I will say this on this chart of, of the richest person in every single American state, Still a lot of white looking people that would not surprise me if they were still really British. By the way, Elon Musk is British South African. But I'm just saying that like, it's the last, like you said, of the media era where it's just like, yo, this group of people just dominated the world for like the past 200, 300 years. It's, it represents the end, maybe, does it? Some people are viewing it as the end of like 200 or 300 years of the world of like Anglo-Saxon dominance. That, that's how they're perceiving. I don't even know if that's true. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of definitely her death comes at a time when I do think a lot of white people feel like the world is changing, maybe not in their favor per se, not to say that they're in a bad situation, but it's just changing. It's peaking a little bit. Andrew, you're saying my 50 point lead is turning to 35. Yeah. 
I don't like it. That's negative 15. Yeah, I think that ultimately I'm glad that people are acknowledging. And I think maybe this happening and this whole discussion maybe does change what people learn about the British Empire growing up. You do need to learn about the negative things that they did as well as you're going to learn about like the advanced things that they had. Um, but I do think it's good to acknowledge everything and acknowledge history because there's a lot of brutal truths in history. Um, but ultimately, I guess my question for a lot of the people who are very angry and glad that uh, Queen Elizabeth has passed on now, um, which, you know, to be honest, I don't feel that strongly about. I really don't. I didn't even post about it. Not that I posted against her, but I definitely didn't post for her. Uh, just because, honestly, I just feel so disconnected from the British Empire and anything that they did. Um, although I am speaking English. But not with a British accent. And I believe that your father came from a former colony of ours. Hey, man. I didn't have dad call us up and be like, hey, guys, did you know Queen Elizabeth has passed? This is a big deal because when your daddy... No, he did not do that. He didn't do that. Um... So I don't think he really cares that much either. But what I'm saying is like, I guess just learn from your colonizers, I guess. That's the best thing I can say, because it happened. Unfortunately, it happened, but I'm saying just learn from it and then I guess try to build on top of it because I think everybody has, uh, you know, room to grow. But I just think, you know, even though these discussions, sometimes I feel like they're stuck at a 101 or 102 level, as long as they keep moving forward, I think it's important because, you know, we're all going to be living in a more multicultural world and a more like, world where everybody's just gonna have to do the work to understand each other better and you know i like to think that that's what we do a little bit through our videos to be honest you know not to toot my own horn you don't want to toot your own horn Burr, burr, burr. all right you guys thank you so much for watching it we broke it down micro mid macro i'm sure there's a ton of stuff that we left out but like i said guys i am not a historian about British matters at all. But I will say, Andrew, after doing all the research I had to do for this video, believe it or not, Andrew, I'd like to go to London. And it's you want to go to London? it's not because I was watching Top Boy or watching Central Sea Freestyles. You, you want to cross the pond? David, the last British show you ever watched was Red Dwarf. That was about 25 years ago. 25. 20. 25, David. God save the queen. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching that video. Please let us know in the comments down below what you think about uh, the queen passing. Does it mean anything? Is it significant to at least the British Empire? Obviously, Prince Charles is stepping in, but do people take him seriously? I don't know. This is the first time we've ever talked about anything British on our channel, um, except having the tea and crumpets in, in, in New York City. That was, that was a cool experience. Fish and chips. I do know that uh, at Assault and Barrel, they did have a lot of memorials to the Queen. It's assault and Battery. Anyways, guys, check it out in the West Village if you want some British food. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button. Hopefully, you, you guys enjoyed this conversation. And, and we obviously not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm yeah. sad for anybody when they pass away, especially such a historical figure. Yeah. I mean, I do history. think she was 96 years old. She died of natural causes. She lived a very... Uh, she was very rich, so, you know, I mean, I think she lived a good life. But, you know, people do die, and things do move on. So thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.